Welcome back to Dr. Stone Anime Review Episode Number 16. This one, I'm not reviewing an episode of the anime this time. That'll be in the next episode. This I'm reviewing the first and, to my knowledge, only special this series released. So far, anyways. This episode is basically called Dr. Stone... Um... Usui. Yes. Now, you're probably thinking, since this is a special, you might be asking the question, Is this canon? Yes, it is, because it's a prelude to this very season. It's mostly put basically filling the gap between seasons two and three. Released just last year, I finally got a chance to sit down and watch it. If you're curious how long this special is, it's 55 minutes, almost an hour long. And if you're curious, how many chapters does it adapt in the special? Six chapters. That pretty much the rest of chapter 84 and goes straight to basically 89. Now, the arc it's covering, first portion of it, is the age of exploration. Which, by the way, if case you're curious, though, is 17 chapters. Actually, like 18 chapters. But with this one, basically, there's only 11 more to go. And by, well, look up basically for episode 38, they're actually just almost done adapting this arc. And, well, now we're in the New World stuff, which is going to be interesting. But before we get there... Now, we first start with this anime original scene, where we have this play, sort of a recap of the series, of uh, basically like the backstory of the series. I like the way they do this, I'm using stock footage. Yes, very original. Thank you, the company who made this. Uh, the company who makes this series is... Um... Uh, TMS Entertainment. Yes, thank you TMS Entertainment for not using stock footage to give a recap of the opening episode of the series. And sort of the way a loose recap of the start of it, per se. Oh, by the way, they're in the former kingdom of Suku. Yes, the guy who they uh, fought in the previous season and now basically they kind of wrapped him up as a villain. Yeah, his whole storyline as a villain, that got wrapped up with the end of the second season of the show. That's better. Yeah, it was my, my cup doing that. So, after convince, uh, talking to these, basically these cave-like guys, which are guys who were unpetrified thanks to Suikun, uh, so, Su, uh, Sukua. So, apparently the plan is to take a, build a boat to go, to go overseas to find out the source of the petrification. But it was going to take years to make it. And like, well, we just give in so much of strapping guys, basically, to build it. And, well, they have a contest. So, basically, of course, uh, Sukun, basically, he basically obviously won. But, at least the big brute guy, he actually got a chance to chip in here. So, we have various stuff happening here. So, they build this boat, but we need someone to navigate it. Look it up, basically, no, by reporter. Yes. A reporter who's got basically looks like headphones on her head. The woman's name is Senku, I guess. Uh, let's see. Her, her name is Menemi. Very beautiful woman. And is it just me, or is that her outfit has, has like no straps on it? It's almost like basically her outfit has like belly holding on. The only reason why it's like that because well, <laughs> it's because of her chest. It's because her chest basically is so big. <laughs> that's my guess anyways oh by the way the one who voices her in the dub Christy Rothrock yep that's who voices her in the dub uh, I think she made her first appearance in the previous season of the show but I actually still have not seen the, the, the I'm not listening to the dub yet for season 2 so so pretty much like so she knows somebody, of course, of course, she obviously thinks of a guy by the name of Wasubi. She has his name. So basically we have her, Senku, Yo, and Magma, and they go to this island where 
Apparently, this is, was a former naval academy. Well, basically, it was a place to train people how to sail the seas. Okay. So, they line people up who are freed from the ground, and they found the guy looking for. They petrify him, and he talks. Because, apparently, that... Megumi probably didn't think that his personality would be a big clash with with us. We could like, nope. So, go, so yeah, Pike just fires him, and of course, Gun's perfectly fine. Of course, he's butt naked. Though he's giving him clothes right away. Of course, he's about some, uh, let's see. He's also given, like, the fact he can actually, oh, sail. Oh, by the way, the guy is very over the top. And you might be curious, though, who does his English dub voice act? Because I watched English dub with this thing. Clifford Shampton, the same guy voices Bakado from One Piece. You might be also thinking, if you listen to this dub, he's just using his Bakado voice for this one. Kind of yes, but here's the thing. It works for the character. Why? Because in the manga, he's also just like this too. So, don't blame Clifford Champton for this. Basically, he just... Just doing basically what he, even though he has, he does what he normally does. He voices a character, goes over the top with it, but the character is over the top. So, of course, this guy is home with rich family. Of course, he has, of course, they also have this thing where his like fingers are painted blue for some strange reason. Also, when he's when he's petrified, he apparently was doing his hand in a way of a snap because this guy likes to snap his fingers to get stuff done. Because of rich family. But you can't exactly make checks out anybody. Excuse me, but I like the fact that even Clifford Champter keeps up the fact that he's not stupid. It takes him only a couple a few minutes to realize though that thousands of years pass by, so it's not exactly the same. So he agrees to become their captain of their ship. In exchange for basically making some money. Of course he also makes currency for them. Yep, makes currency. And of course, they also have a thing where they have to go and map out the area. Though we'll, we'll get to back to that. They also make cloth to make the sails. So they also have to make a higher balloon after what after they discover that the the whole country's landmass has been altered by volcanoes. Yes, apparently several times over the course of 3,700 years, the whole the whole country has been altered. The landmass has been altered, like where apparently there was supposed to be an oil. Like, oil refinery was sealed off. It's now a gigantic water flight like it's Niagara Falls. Yep. I'm surprised, basically, <laughs> that, um... What's her name, uh... By the way, Suka's in the episode, and she's still hilarious as possible. She's also super treated as the cute girl. Uh, is it Riri, I think it is? No, or her sister. Uh, Kahaku. Yeah. Oh, by the way, there's a joke about her. Like, her being part of the gorilla team. Which is so funny. And she's like, I'm not a gorilla. <laughs> which is so hilarious. Yeah, so it's just quite hilarious back to basic and stuff like this. So, yeah. By the way, she, I think she would them, but it's good to take stuff up. So, they get back and, of course, make the currency. Of course, they sell stuff. And then they decided to, to make a clothing store to sell these fancy clothes. Of course, they have Suku. Uh, they have her. Well, first one is, is Riri, who's the priestess. And. She looks so beautiful wearing... Well, they put her basically in a sleeveless sweater and a scarf. And, of course, uh, Sukuwa basically is put in his adorable dress. And, of course, they comment like, Oh, she's so cute. Like, I want to buy that. Not her, per se. Just the dress. This, of course, is the, the beefy girl, Nikki. Oh, by the way, they also... Uh, the, the magma basically points out, though, that... Oh, the whole thing of the fact that... He doesn't consider her a woman because she's because she's basically got a lot of muscle. And Ryushu is like, you hear three beautiful babes? Even he can tell she's hot. <laughs> Which, 
Yeah, at least he's got to face the fact he's basically does he's not picky by his women. He even once tries to bribe her in the episode, which of course she kind of turns it down, but she agrees to work with him anyways. Yep. But this is so far really good. So then eventually, like, okay, we got to make a new map. So eventually, Street becomes the interesting idea of them flying. So make a hot air balloon. Yep, make a hot air balloon. Of course, they also make a special press, which of course also uh. Uh, where Ogawa basically is just making the stuff. Of course, she makes it close, like going like berserk. And of course, okay, is like, oh, that 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 that's no over if she gets into it. Yeah, she made all the clothes herself. Yeah, and she's also the one who had the reassembled broken statues that the Gazuka had to be, uh, broken the previous series, previous season, the series. Yeah, so she could be kind of basically very punch heavy with Sikua, but Sengoku, so. They make the higher balloon, and of course they fly, and of course they have a little adventure in the sky. Well, before that, Chrome decides he has to come along because he always wanted to fly. So eventually, thanks to, to a card game, we have Suku, obviously, and we have basically the three, three, two, two, the two science guys, and a navigator, who's also a captain who basically navigates the skies. And from his perspective, this is nothing different than sailing seas; it's, it's navigating the sky. But using a hot air balloon, it was different enough a difference. And of course, basically the good time flying, and of course, of course, they have birds fly by. Of course, I mentioned, oh yeah, birds cause plane crashes. Okay, that's partially true, but plane crashes can also be caused due to collision, being shot down, um, engine trouble. Well, if engines damage, whatever. But yeah, birds not the only thing they cause basically with plane crashes, which of course they also come across a this this. Nimbus cloud. That's it. basically it's a giant dragon cloud. Which here's the I'm sure this is probably made for this series because I have never heard. It's almost like basically they describe this cloud is the way it's like they don't want to say the word hurricane. Yeah, that's basically the best way to describe it. They don't want to say it's a hurricane. So the men took it out of it though. The stuff like they, they could easily like dump out the high air, but it turns out the the top of the the balloon is basically a hole in the birds. But this overall, and of course they end up with basically them arriving at their destination, which is Dummy Village. That was the destination. They want to fly there, which basically got there in two hours. Which normally it takes two days walk to get there. So yeah, above good transportation. And this definitely was necessary to do this. Do it like this. Instead of basically just do a my, my guess is probably that the rest of the season wasn't ready yet, and they probably figured, though, we had these three, we had these, like, excuse me, you watch this, it's almost like these were planned to be three episodes, but my guess is the rest of the season wasn't planned yet. I'm sure TMS may fall behind, but they must figure figured out, okay, we, we, we have these three episodes ready to go, why don't we just put them together as a special, and just basically do it that way or at least basically plan to have that special because they want to they, they want to figure oh we might get the series of year off but the manga has been discontinued publishing and you're thinking really it has when when did the manga end you might ask well if you are really curious though the last chapter was only released a year ago yeah, a year ago last month. Yep. Yeah, so... Maybe they thought that basically that... They probably didn't realize though the manga had ended. So that's probably the reason I just did this one special. I gave it basically like another year before I do another season. But one thing I do hope though... Is that... When they now, in the case of basically, if they're gonna dab the next arc, which is Treasure Island, uh, they could be dab this one, but the season's called New World, so we're in the New World Saga. Yeah, that's pretty much where we are, the New World Saga.
which is called, well, actually it's called the Source Publication. So I would not be surprised if they also adapted uh, the Treasure Island arc as well, because that would actually make sense to adapt that. Mm hmm. Yeah, I would probably think that would make sense to, to adapt this whole saga for this one season. And if you're curious, how long was the... The previous season was adapting a Stone Wars arc. It's basically adapting, like, two story arcs. Uh, well, they kind of partially adapted Stone Wars saga with the end of the previous, first season of the show. And pretty much in the way, like, the very next season is, like, just... Well... How should I put this? It was basically adapting, like, finishing up adapting one story arc. Yeah, but why in the world they waited so long for the next season? I don't know. I honestly don't have any idea. But that's probably what they're going to do here. Yep. So, yeah, that's particularly a particular view. Next up is going to be, well, a comic corner. It's on to the very next episode of Dr. Stone. Okay, next video. Bye.